Ah, we may have a problem. You can make it make a thousand horsepower. Yeah, that's top notch work, isn't it? Welcome back to our 2,000 pound, 240,000 mile DCAT LPG converted GS300. To find out if we've bought a dog or not, we thought we'd bring this car to SRD Tuning, who have been specialising in Supras and 2J cars since 2003. And I think we're in the right place. After seeing SRD's dyno in action, we decided to strap down the GS300 and show off a little. So with that totally real and in no way faked dyno result out of the way, we then moved into SRD's workshop so that one of SRD's founders, Ash, who's been building two Jay-Z's for over 20 years, could take a look at our gem of a GS300. So Ash, cheers for having us. Uh, you're very welcome. I'm sorry that we've brought you this. Yeah, a bit of a heap, innit? It, it, yeah, it is. I was going <laughs> to ask you for your initial impressions, but I think we get the idea, don't we? So we've just had a dyno run. Yep. And we made... 189 on conventional petrol, and then we made 182 on gas. It's not bad, is it? So that number corrected from wheel to crank. That's basically 220, like round-ish. So. I mean, that's pretty much bang on the numbers, isn't it? So. Sweet. How many miles has the car done? 240. And it hasn't lost a single pony. It hasn't. That is 240 miles as well. We had some comments, which we'll ping up here. It's actually just a Facebook glitch that won't let you list the car in miles. Thanks, Zuckerberg. I think we've probably have bought a shitter, but we want to hear it from people that actually know. Normally, if they've been well maintained, they're normally pretty good. Okay. Um, so it's just the maintenance history, if it's had a maintenance history. As soon as we start getting into it, we'll find out if it's had maintenance or not. At the front, it looks like two different headlights. I clocked that. Yeah, yeah so they do normally fog up pretty bad plastic kind of goes all milky but yeah it looks like that my side's been changed and mm. this side's all still nice and milky we've got a little bit of crust oh here yep. someone's tried to disguise it yeah they have haven't they for yeah. sure they've definitely put some uh, some spray over there i don't want to look any closer than that no, because no. it is literally like a good inch all the way around that wheel arch that someone's been with an angle grinder and in here we've got the lpg tank yeah, it looks like it's been fitted okay. I don't know what a good kit looks like, I don't know what a bad kit looks like, so... I mean, looking at that, it's bolted securely-ish. It's got conduit over the gas pipes, which is nice to protect it. But it could do a bit of a tidy up, but it's not too bad. And around this side, it's like more of the same. It's pretty indestructible though, wouldn't they? I mean, that's had a dink, but that is... It's still it's, presentable, yeah, right? It's, it's solid, it's <laughs> yeah. solid. So the, the interior is where it really shines. Oh, come on. I mean, you can't grumble with that. Look at the seat. You know, the leather's held up really well. Yeah, that looks lovely. That looks lovely inside. How much do you think that we paid for this? Uh, looking at the condition, I don't know, three grand? <gasps> Come on! It's got a 2J in it. But yeah, it's just going to be worth that all day, right? Yeah, sure. Go cool, then how much you pay for it? We paid two. Wow, that's pretty good going. Do you know what? The interior does look pretty good. You know, I'm not a great fan of the walnut, but... Are you not? No, There's something no. about it that I really no, not like. For, not for me. But it's not chipped. I mean, it's incredible conditions for this yeah. car. And this interior as well, this colour, Ethan coined the phrase uh, silver leather. Silver leather? Is that what you're going for? Okay. Yeah. Well, we just think, think it sounds more prestige than uh, beige. I'm really eager to get the key in, actually. Yeah, yeah, no, go Can ahead. I do it? Can yeah, I do it? Ahead. Basically, with the Lexus, the steering column's really complex. So if the steering column still works, you're all good. And this is, it still operates like a steering column. Look so. at that. <laughs> and is your management light on? Yeah, that's on. Okay. And you can see there the mileage. Well, I say 240, but well, we're 239,909. Yeah, so you're yeah. very close. We're almost yeah, there. We'll, sure. we'll round up. There's not even wear on the actual yeah. buttons themselves. Even the shifter. The steering wheel's absolutely perfect. There's no like wearing the leather. It's still got all its. Yeah, it feels great. I mean, if you said that this had 60K on it, it wouldn't be surprising, would you? Do you know what I mean, like, with the condition of it? If this came in with 60K, I would think it was a genuine 60K. Wow, yeah, we should have rolled it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so from a peak, let's go to a low. I think we get underneath this thing. Okay. I don't think it's gonna be as nice. Okay, so she's up in the air. 
straight away notice that we're missing a lug nut. I would like to say this is the first time I bought a car missing lug nuts, but unfortunately it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I've not had a good look underneath this. Let's do it. Yep, okay, yep. let's do it. I'm scared. Should we start at the front? Yeah, that's good. I that's... mean, it's probably leaking more than what's actually probably in the sump at the moment. <laughs> As you can see here, there's lots of oil from underneath it. Do, do they usually leak like that? No, not normally. No. <laughs> Corrosion, no, it's not too bad. Still got its rubber boots on everything as well. That's a good sign. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. You decatted it. It wasn't me. <laughs> so the story goes, it got decayed by some um, cat burglars, and then he's fashioned some sort of uh, downturn on it. It looks yep. like it's all made of mud. Great welding. Yeah, that's top-notch work, isn't it? So obviously that, that's a big issue. We're, we're missing that. Probably released a few more horses out of it, though. That's, that's why, why those that, numbers were so impressive. That's why the numbers are so good. <laughs> That's standard though, that's like Yeah, I mean, that's, right. that's, that's okay. Again, a bit of an oil leak from the back of the gearbox. It's done 240,000 miles. I mean, look at the underside of it still. It's still got all its under seal on it. I can't see too much corrosion at the moment. Oh, that's good. Looking pretty solid. We've got another oil leak from the front uh, front input shaft seal on the diff. Subframes are all still intact, not rotted out. Some of the arms that normally fail on the bushes as well, but it, it looks okay. Would you say that you're pleasantly surprised with the state of it under there? For a car with this mileage, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty good. I'll we'll take not too bad. So I can't say anything with the dampeners, they're not leaking at the top. I mean, it's not BMW, otherwise I'd have a broken spring. To be fair, this rides quite nicely. It's almost nice to drive if it wasn't for the decap. It's the noise that ruins it. Yeah, fuel lines, brake lines as well. You know, that's a common problem with them, but you can see all the, all the lines are looking good. Both sides, they haven't started to corrode out. There you go, there's a fuel line problem. You see up there, you started to all rust out, and then they've put a bit of rubber over it to join it back up again to yeah, stop yeah. the fuel leak. So if you were looking at this car without knowing the mileage, what would you guess that it was on? I would guess because of a few of the leaks, probably say 100,000. 100, okay, so a little bit more than the, the interior suggested. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's understandable. We'll take that. Ah. Ah. We may have a problem. Yeah, we may have spoken too soon. <laughs> that's a small, large hole. This side still looks intact. Yeah, that's just, right. Just that side. Yeah, that is troubling. That is that is proper crusty in there. Yeah, hold on a minute. Let me just give that a Are poke. you uh, doing <laughs> that? Oh, <I> don't... <laughs> oh, wow. God, it was going so well. Okay, so let's end on the high of that gaping hole in our, uh, in our chassis. Um, should we look at the reason why we've come here today? Yeah, let's do it. So, Ash. Why isn't this making a thousand horsepower? Well, this is your normally aspirated 2JZ GE VVTi. You can make it make a thousand horsepower, okay. but you need a big honking great turbo, different inlet manifold, injector, fuel system, clutch, and a whole other list of parts. But we have pushed these engines to over a thousand horsepower. All the internals all get changed out. The only thing that stays stock on this engine, if you want to go to a thousand horsepower, is crankshaft. If you didn't want to go changing all the internals and stuff, what's like the minimum that you, you would have to do and what could you see? What sort of power? So an NAT kit um, on a log manifold is the cheapest option to go. You would still need a set of injectors, a piggyback ECU, a fuel pump, small intercooler on it, but it is doable. You can get this to like 400, 450. With this particular engine, it's got really skinny rods in it, so that is the weakest point on this engine. Yeah. Any more power than that, it just folds the rods like a banana. Okay, right, that doesn't sound good. We won't want that. No. No. Uh, at the moment, you know, 700 wheel horsepower on a GTE is possible on an unopened block. Any more on that, and you do risk damaging the pistons. And what is the difference between a GE and a GTE? So, GE is a NA uh, variant of the 2JZ, uh, GTE is the turbo variant. The GTE variant has thicker rods, it also has piston squirters, it has um, oil-fed uh, crown piston as well, so the oil squirter actually fires up into the crown of the piston, keeping the piston cool. Uh, the main difference is with both of the engines is the cylinder head, but the port shapes, the strength around the cylinders, and the cam profiles are all totally different between the two. The GTE is a fantastic engine, but the GE, you can get decent power out of the GEs. But this isn't to be sniffed at, is it? Like these no, are still, no, not these at all. Still... What common issues that you see with these? Like, do you see them fail in one particular area? They are pretty much bulletproof. The only things which will fail on the engine is if they haven't been maintained. A lot of the 
seals and gaskets over the years go hard and if they don't get changed out you end up with a problem like this car's got where it's got oil leaking from the back from the sides from the front so it just hasn't had any of them seals change and they just go like rock hard like plastic let's start pulling it apart let's see how deep we get in to pulling the engine apart and seeing what we can replace as well you know maybe some gaskets on it to stop that oil leak that's all leaking down the back of the engine and yeah we'll just go from there and see what we can find when we take it all apart Right, so I've pulled it down to this part. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so we can uh, have a good look at the cams now. Is this what you expected to see, this sort of condition? I mean, this car has had oil changes. It's been looked after? It's been looked after, it's had oil changes. The colour of the, the cylinder head, the cams, it's not black, it's nice golden brown. So it's been well looked after throughout you know, some of its life. Obviously we had the whole centre valley of the cylinder head filled with oil. Yeah, it was full of like, bits as well, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Chunks of shit in there. Plastic and all sorts there. Yeah. But actually looking at the cams, there's very little wear on them. So on other engines, when you pull the cam covers off of them, even on much less miles than this. They've got like pitting and wear, don't they? Yeah, I mean, the, the tops of the lobes will have quite a lot of wear. Obviously, it's not had many oil changes. There'll be black um, carbon build up in the top of the rocker covers and in the cylinder head. But yeah, the 2J just hold up so well. You know, nearly a quarter of a million miles and it looks like that. So these are the plugs that we've pulled out the engine. We'll look at the electrode, to see how much it's worn. And they look pretty good. And also the color of the porcelain. So you can see that one's been burning nice and clean. There's no black or soot on the plug. It's well in its heat range. Um, you can tell obviously it's filled up with oil. Oh yeah. Um, after we've cleaned it's it. It's like all. the high tide mark on it, yeah. So overall these spark plugs, they show us that the engine's quite healthy and happy. Yeah, for sure. The, all the colour on all the plugs are all identical. There's no change in colour on any of the porcelain. So it shows that all six cylinders are burning efficiently. Sweet. I knew this was a good car. Should we have a look actually down the bores and see what kind of condition the bores are in sure. and how, it's, how the engine's been running? That'd be great, yeah. So we're looking at number one piston now. You can see there's not much carbon build up around this one. It's quite clean, because you're running it on LPG and fuel, that's why it's so clean. So if I go further down, we can see all the cross hatching. So here we go, we can see the exhaust valves. And as we go down, you can see the thrust faces of the engine. But it's still got most of its cross hatching on it. Only a little bit there that isn't. So cross hatching on the bores is actually the oil retention on the bores. So without it, you'll have an engine that smokes. Retains the oil on the side of the cylinder wall and obviously keeps the piston and the skirt lubricated at the same time. But it looks very good condition. So looking at these bores, what sort of mileage would you guess this was on? Or is this pretty standard when you see these? Some engines you get which are very glazed up because they've either had too much fuel going through them, um, which is bore washing all the cylinders. But no, this engine is looking very healthy. No, they're all looking mint. That's great. This is a good contender to NAT then? Yeah, I wouldn't have any issues at all with NAT in this one. Yeah, this is fine. So overall, at 240,000 miles, we're happy with the state of this engine. Yeah, for sure. If you'd have given me this engine and done 50,000 miles, they look like this. I, I feel though, that's not so much us maybe buying a good one, but it's just in general, 2Js are just really good at like, holding are, up against wear. Yeah, yeah, they are really good. And I'm sure if you were to strip this engine and pull it to bits, the main bearings will be mint, the rod bearings will be mint. It will all be, it'll be just like the top of the engine. It'll be nice golden brown let's, colors. Let's do that. So it, has, so, it, <laughs> no. so it hasn't been, it's never been overheated. There's, no, there's yeah. another thing I've picked up as well. It's never been overheated yeah. with it as well. Well, I guess this has probably had quite an easy life though, hasn't it? Being in this car, being yes. auto, it's not been ragged. And yep. It's not been, had any real strain, I guess, has it? Okay, so next stage, if we were going to go NAT, what, would, what parts would go into that? Okay, so first of all would be a set of injectors. Make sure you've got enough fuel for the bump up in power. It would then need a piggyback ECU if you retain the auto gearbox. It would obviously need a manifold, a turbo, a downpipe, an intercooler, uh, air temp sensor, fuel pump. So there's a few parts to it, yeah. uh, but it is possible. You can do it. This is the, the perfect engine to NAT. These are the weakest engine out of all the 2J. So it would need a set of rods yeah. and a set of pistons, and then it'd be good to go. So after removing the cam covers, I think I found the source of the oil leaks. These are meant to be rubber. <laughs> and well, they they're like twiglets. <laughs> so 
I love they Twiglets. Just, They've had it, haven't they? They're tight. Yeah, so very poor condition, never been changed. This is, this has done a quarter of a million miles. Do you reckon? For sure, 100%. And they're actually meant to be mad. We're just too crusty. We're just too crusty and we're leaking oil. So yeah, let's get some new cam covers, seals on it, and then put it all back together again. So Ash, lots of ups and downs today. Yep, but some good ups though. The engine, yes. really healthy. So yeah, what, what are you gonna do to it? Well, I think Ethan's got some plans for some mad builds, yeah. He said something about something the world's never seen before, no one's ready for it or something. I don't okay. know. Yeah. Anyway, cheers for having us down. No, you're welcome. Guys, if you've got a Supra or something Jay-Z powered, then you need to bring it here. Like the stuff that these guys are doing is, it's mad, it's wicked. And also check out their YouTube channel, it's SRD Tuning on YouTube. Yep, that's it. And uh, yeah, we hold a lot of parts and stock for the Jay-Z in the UK, but I'm glad you've all enjoyed yourself today. It's excellent, I I've loved it, and new appreciation for these engines. Yeah, you can't beat them, they're incredible Definitely bits not. to get. If you want to watch more videos, you can click here, and if you want to subscribe, down there. Should we rip out this LPG stuff? Should we do it now? <laughs> Come on. Come on, <laughs> should we just rip it all out? Yeah, let's go.